Hey guys, it's Curators, and today we're going to be unboxing the Canon EOS, I believe it's the M3. Uh, it's their, one of their, not newest, well I guess it is their newest mirrorless camera. Uh, but it came out in 2015, I don't remember, probably about six months ago or so. We'll also be uh, unboxing with it the kit lens, which is the 18 to 55, I think it's an f3.5 to 5.5, let me look. 3.5 to 5.6 STM. And I also bought the um, the 22 millimeter wide angle, I think it's an f2 just a prime so anyway, let's get it get to unboxing i don't have um i don't have like a table to work with but we're gonna use what we can so as i throw the box down um i bought this from amazon uh, i bought it really i wanted like to get it really really soon because i'm going to pax prime um in boston massachusetts this weekend not this weekend well next weekend but it's it's sunday right now sunday the uh 17th i'll be going next weekend but i'll be gone at boston a few days early so i needed things to kind of like get here i didn't necessarily need it now like today today but i wanted it to get it uh, i paid for extra shipping on saturday shipping because i wanted to get to be able to use it and try it out and see if i wanted it you know or if i was gonna bring my other camera so my old camera, I was using the SL1, the Rebel SL1, and uh, as you know, um, I liked it. It was tough to deal with. I didn't like that I couldn't, you know, there's no flippy outy screeny, um, and that was a big gripe for me. And then I should have thought of that before I bought it. I just thought I would try it out because I have so many like EF uh, M lenses or sorry um, EFS lenses or just F mount, you know, EF, EF uh, mount lenses like right here. This is the, I bought this, remember guys, I did an unboxing in my other videos on the 24 millimeter uh, EFS mount lines. And uh, it's got to go. Um, my cat is eating like all the packaging. Um, anyway, so I gave the, the camera, the SL1 to my dad because he wants to try it out for, he was doing bird watching stuff and uh, you know, um, that's his thing now since he's retired. Like all men apparently when they retire, they do bird watching. Sorry, I just don't want my cats eating this shit. Okay, um, let's see here. Here's the box. We're gonna be opening up the uh, kit lens and the uh, body itself. So this is the EOS M3. As you can see, normal Canon packaging. This is actually not as crazy as, uh, you can actually probably see in the background, there is a T6i back there. That's another mistake. Um, but this is like kind of going back to its roots in my opinion. like. If if you like if you guys remember the SL1 and the Rebel the Rebel line is just pat on your face like it's kind of like almost attracting younger adults and stuff. She hates she loves bags. Um, anyway, and boxes. So this is kind of going back to its old format in my opinion. Um, you know, just kind of picking up on that red white just basic pictures on the boxes. I like that. Anyway. So what you have is just the normal Canon, you know, descriptions, all the specs on the back, and then, you know, just, just this picture all around. So let's go ahead and open up the box. Move this mic out of the way. Uh, don't have much room on this desk. Or, well, I do, but I don't have any place to put my, my cam, my webcam. I don't want to switch, have to cut things. So um, it comes with the normal, it's my cat. If you can hear him whining as he's looking at birds. Um, this is pretty much the, uh, the limited warranty fill out sheet. This is the instruction manual. And then of course they always have some advertisement for some of their other products that we won't talk about. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the box. So let me actually show you guys again, if I can. This is kind of back to our SL1 days when I was doing this. Um, so you just pull this tab up and bam, everything you ever wanted is down below. Um, this has uh, three compartments. And the reason why is a lot of people go, oh, why Why is there something missing? And what I figured is if you buy just the body, you'll get just this, okay? This, these both will be empty. They use the same packaging for all their stuff. There is uh, two options or three options, I believe, for a, um, uh, that you can buy with this camera. And it's either the 18 to 55 with the, uh, you know, like 55 to 200 or something like that. Or you could upgrade this guy to the 55 to 135 and also have that to whatever telephoto type zooming lens. So that's why uh, there's always empty compartments so they can use the same packaging, but just put in the body for all of them and then put in the, uh, you know, the kit lenses if they order them. 
All right, um, let's go ahead. And, let's look at the body first. Let's like to look at the body. Um, let's look at this guy's body or girl's body. I don't know. All right, so this is the camera itself. There's not much in this box. It's really just the camera body, as well as this, you know, instruction manual and stuff and the lens. Um, so here's a little packaging stuff that's cool, and then a little dust bag protector. Um, and then it's a very sleek body from my, I can tell by holding it. I, I've used a power shot, like the old school, like S95, um, Canon. So I've, I've been in the Canon family for a while, if that makes sense. Um, so here it is in all its glory. It looks all nice. It's a very, um, it's a, it's a basic kind of like a mid DSLR hold with the handle. Um, it's a nice handle though. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty comfortable, even though my hands are pretty big. Um, I like that. Um, it's a pretty big screen. It's like oh, almost as big as, if not big as the SL1. So that's kind of cool. The reason, another reason I really like this camera is because of this feature right here, guys. It has, look at this. It has a mic port. I could put my video mic pro or any kind of like, you know, shotgun uh, mic or anything like that to this guy. So that's really cool for a small package such as the EOS M3. Um, I don't think there's any other cameras out there on Canon, Canon's line, at least. I think Sony makes a lot of good cameras that are like this. But the reason why I went with M3, I was actually thinking about going with Sony because I had to buy new lenses because this does not use an EFS mount. It uses an EFM mount, and I really hate them for this. But because it's mirrorless, you know, that's what they had to do, I guess. But if you want to look at, like, we can look at the sensor. Um, I don't want to open this too much because I'm always paranoid about this. People, you know, just open the sensor. Here it is. Um, there's a lot of hair in here, so, you know, I'm always worried. So there's a sensor itself, though. It runs on, um, I think it's just a micro. I don't know if it's a micro four-thirds or what, but it's 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 obviously not full frame, but it's it's really big. It's not bad. Um, and then the reason why I liked it, I was saying I like this over the, the Sony Alpha 6300 is one of their newest cameras that just came out. Uh, it's a really good camera from what I can tell spec-wise. But the reason why I wanted this, I can show you, is even though, you know, Sony has this part, okay? You're like, oh, that's cool. It's a, uh, you know, it's just a screen that pops out and blah, 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 and you can kind of angle it down. You know, it has an accordion feature. But this is the reason why I wanted this camera is because of the, oh, my God, what is that? It is the selfie feature. And a lot of people go, well, why would you need a mirrorless camera to take a selfie? I know a lot of people say, just take out your phone. And, um, you know, because it looks, it looks kind of weird, right? Um, and the reason I got it is because I vlog. Um, I think that's why most people will, will end up buying this camera um, because of vlogging. Uh, as well as, you know, there might be people who just do touristy stuff and, and they just pick up an EOS OM. Um, but for me, it's, it's really the vlogging aspect. And um, with the SL1, it was really hard. The SLN has face tracking, but it's always just, you know, even with an STM, with the 24 millimeter STM, it's just, you know, and you can look at my vlog videos, uh, like TwitchCon, one of them was, uh, with low lighting was terrible. Like it just the whole time. So what I end up doing now is on my, uh, recent videos, you notice that you might not notice that sounds not happening as much anymore. And that's because I just set the, um, the, the focus to manual and I just put it at a certain point and I would just find out where it was, you know, with my arms length away. And I would look at, I'd record a bit be like, okay, that's good. And keep it at arm's length and wouldn't move it. And so that's what I had to do. And that was a way of a uh, workaround, but I like to be able to tell by just looking at, you know, the screen should something happen. And I like keeping it on autofocus because it's just faster to get that set up and stuff, honestly. So I'll be trying this out this weekend. I will actually probably be doing, uh, yeah, this weekend, I'll be doing a vlog today. Hopefully if the, if the uh, battery can hold up, um, so I'll be doing that, but let's go ahead and look at the uh, this kit lens. This is the like I said, the 18 the 55, 3.6 or 3.5 to 5.6 STM. STM is the new uh, kind of motor system they've been using. I don't remember what it stands for. Something something motor. Um, it's supposed to be s silent, maybe it's silent. Um, it's supposed to be a lot more like uh, it's all internal, um, and it's just quieter. Uh, I've noticed that for sure with the. Um, Sorry, let me show you this lens. It's a really cool, actually sleek lens. I like these lenses. They look like the newer kind of, um, the newer Sigma lenses. I think they, they feel that way. Um, these look, this looks really nice. Here's a little zoom uh, feature on that. I do honestly like uh, the internal zoom stuff more, but you know that means your, your lens is always uh, at max zoom, which is this long. 
But I like those ones, like the uh, the 18 to 35, I believe, uh, that I have is like that where, or 16 to 35, excuse me, where everything just moves inside the barrel and you don't notice this, this accentuating or whatever you call it, this action, okay? I don't like this because, excuse me, I don't know. I just never really like that. It always feels a little like, you know, just shaky. I don't know. That's just me. But anyway, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, put this on the, the body itself. So here's the lens cap. This is not lens cap, but the backwards part. It's a pretty standard, just, you know, screw back, screw on backy. Um, let me go ahead and put this on top of the, the camera. It's, not, it's really hard to work around <laughs> this microphone in the way. Um, all right. There we go. This locks in like normal. They don't have the red dots like they do on the uh, the EFS lines, or at least on my other uh, Canon bodies. But um, here it is. Uh, this is what it looks like on the body itself. As you can see, it is made so it fits perfectly there. Um, if you used any EFS lenses, I have one around here. So if I were to pick this up, as you can tell, it's just it's just bigger um, in diameter, and it just it's just slightly bigger, so it wouldn't end up fitting. You can tell right there. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you guys can actually tell. But, um, it's slightly bigger, um, on, on this one, the EFS, it's hard to really tell, but it is bigger. If you look at it, like it's hard to tell by the lens cap. You have to tell by the barrel itself. Um, and then across the back, it would just wouldn't fit on. They do have an adapter. They have an EFM to EFS, uh, mounting adapter. And, um, it costs like a Canon's version costs about a hundred ten dollars or so it has no optics all it is is a pretty much a converter or a adapter plus um they they have the microchip stuff to get you know the the autofocus stuff um kind of like working i guess you would say so you know because the, the autofocus stuff is built in like the the little the contact leads are in the, the um sensor mount area itself right here and then you know the the converter itself um will kind of bring the, I guess, the electricity or whatever you want to call it through the converter and to the uh, other side of the contact leads on here, which you can see are right here on the side. Um, those golden leads right there are what kind of sends over the data for certain things on the lens. It does more than just autofocus, I believe. Um, anyway, so we turn on this camera. We just hit this. There's a little, there's a little um, what do they call it? A flush on and off button right here. Um, and hopefully I have batteries in here already. Let me see. Actually, maybe I don't. I don't. There must be batteries in here. Oh, totally missed some under the lens, guys. Sorry. Okay. So apparently there's, I was like, so I was thinking there's got to be like more stuff. Um, under the lens, not the body, which is weird to me. Uh, they have a few things. They have, of course, oh, of course the Canon strap. How do we forget the Canon strap? The Canon Yosem strap. Uh, you got to, you got to support that Canon put that back there um it doesn't come with a with a charger or does it oh it does come with a charger good i was like i think it's the same charger as i think it's the same battery as no maybe not i think it i think it's the same as sl1 i i think it is it looks very similar here's just the charger here and then the battery itself is this guy so that'd be kind of cool if it was because i can you know Get off of this. Sorry, my cat. Um, uh, it's a little tiny battery. Let's open it. I don't know what... Let's see if we can find the model number on it. But it's... Get off of this, man. All right, this is what I like to do with these. Remember, guys? I always showed you guys before. You take the, the lens butt and the in the sensor butt, I guess, the other way around, and you just go... Oh, little sandwich. I love this. I don't know why. It's just always been my thing. Um. All right, let's open this this uh, battery up so it is uh the lpe 17 i believe that is the same as the sl1 and probably all the rebel lines too because it's a pretty pretty compact uh square battery so let's go ahead and put that in i don't have a card well actually i do have a card for this but let's just go ahead and see if i can shoot without the card itself so i'm gonna line this up my cat is going crazy um all right so we just turn this on got hold down for about a second Oh, got to set the date time. All right, let's do that real quick. It is uh, not 2016, but okay. Or 15. Um, four, seven, oops, four, 
17. It's pretty easy actually to do this. And then it is now 1.51 p.m. I think they do a military. They do. I knew it. Oh, you can go backwards. That's cool. Uh, month, month, day, day, year, year. Sure. Oh. Okay. London. What? No, we are not in London. It defaults to London and it's blue. Like... Oh, time zone. <laughs> uh, Los Angeles, please. Los Angeles. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So now we got everything set up. It's pretty quick. Um, no memory card. Well, yeah. So let's uh, take this off. And this is, I like to bring up, this is the pinchy middle -y, um lens cap, which is nice. So here it is in all its glory, guys, as you can see. Oh, it's a catception. Hi. So, um, hey, guys. Um, let me look at the focal length range. I can't really show you guys, unfortunately, but... Um, this is definitely a good, uh, I always call this as a good, uh, whoa, I did not mean to do that, but okay. Can I record? Thank you. It's a really touchy, um, shutter button, actually. It was a little more touchy than I thought I anticipated, but now it's fine. It's kind of, it was kind of weird. I think I just couldn't tell that it was manually focusing or auto-focusing uh, while I was hitting the button down, half-pressing, but it is. Anyway, so you got the record button right up here by your thumb for video mode. Since there isn't really, like, I mean, there is a video mode on here. Um, then you would use this instead of the shutter. I'm sure you can change in the options. But, um, you know, they have a little, uh, they have little stuff for, like, since they have a viewfinder, I guess this is a little thing for, I'm assuming for the, uh, the screen. Maybe not. Um... Anyway, they have a few things in here uh, as well as, you know, you have your normal auto, manual, AV, TVP, uh, as well as auto video and then just video itself. Um, <laughs> so they have, you know, basic settings on the top, uh, wheelie thingy. Hot shoe mount, if you want to, they have a little hot shoe protector if you want to use the hot shoe mount. Uh, that'd be, you know, probably for your um, microphones, maybe some other things. The thing you have to understand is if you use a microphone, and it also there is a electronic viewfinder, so EVW, that you can put... EVF that you can put on here. Uh, the thing you have to understand about using the EVF or a shoddy is that shoddy is that you can't use this feature. You can only, uh, you know, bring it to about maybe here. So do keep that in mind, guys. If you do plan on using a shoddy or um, or something on the hot shoe that you might not be able to use the selfie feature. All right, guys. So um, if I were to show you this part itself, uh, the selfie thing. So See how easy this is. I will send it to you guys so you can tell, like, you know, exactly. This is my webcam. It's a little camception as well up there, a little cam battle. Uh, double cam battle, actually. There's a, a, whoops, there is a PlayStation one over there. So basically, you know, uh, you can kind of see the screen. Uh, it's my outside view, stuff like that. So um, it's a pretty cool, uh, it is actually, let me see. It shows the face tracking on there. I know you, uh, well, maybe, yeah, there you go. Look at that. Face tracking is pretty um, instantaneous. There's a little bit of lag, and I don't know if that's by webcam. Let's see. No, it looks very, very good. Um, it's with the the recording that was showing lag. So there's that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and put this down, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in the – I'm not put in the – I'm going to open up the 22 millimeter since this we've been fucking around a little bit on this. Um so I bought a 22 millimeter. Damn, hey, Dan, no, no, no. Sorry, my cat's on, on my computer and... Just a sec. Okay. Okay. You may go. Oh, ow. Ooh, so, ow. Sorry, guys. All right. <laughs> hey. Um, so this is the 22 millimeter um, S or STM as well. Uh, this is a wide angle, so we'll have to see how this works out. I I bought I picked this one up because you know I was thinking about vlogging with that eighteen the uh, the eighteen to um, fifty five or whatever it is. But I was like, you know, eighteen millimeter is a great like kind of uh, a good like you know head and shoulders to kind of arm length for me. But I was just I was thinking of like you know when I when would I use zoom and would it be heavy? It was the biggest thing, right? And it's it's actually pretty heavy. Um, with the with the lens, it's pretty heavy. So I mean, I could easily do it. You know, so I do what I do like the old two finger like this, um, uh, and and that would work. 
it'd be nice for vlogging where you if you want to zoom in on someone or a subject um it'd be at your disposal so to speak and 55 isn't that bad of a zoom and i guess you know judging by the uh oh my god i love gotta love that packaging um judging by the uh the sensor size it's probably even more so this is gonna be a good uh kind of example of i don't know how the 22 is gonna act compared to my 24 it might be kind of like the 24. uh and what i mean by that is that on the sl1 you know the the 24 acts more like a 40 millimeter uh because of the micro four thirds or the aspc i keep on saying micro four thirds i'm sorry guys the aspc all right all right let's open this up thanks amazon it's amazon man their packaging sometimes is out of this world like it's like it's like just more than you need oh yeah this is the box i like guys this is eco-friendly i love this box um this is how lenses should be shipped in now um and the reason why is because before you remember you'd buy a 22 millimeter and it would come in this box over here like this is your lens would come in this big old box i guess you know what maybe it's because i buy l lenses and they're all like that anyway um get out of here you cats don't ever get cats anyway so this is the box it looks just like the 24 millimeter i believe i believe uh, if we go back to my other videos this is probably what they look like uh let's open it up oh i'll show you the box um just has the words and a little picture that's pretty much it can can is going their black and silver uh little thing here for maybe for the ef uh m lenses or yeah efl lenses a little uh limited liability or warranty whatever you know uh and then this is the instruction manual who cares about these actually you know you should keep keep the uh, warranty who cares about the instruction manual um normal uh cookie cutter uh bubble wrap all right guys this is it and all it's called the 22 prime stm 2.0 um macro i guess it says macro out this this uh if you go this close um it's pretty small let's put it next to the efs 24 millimeter because i feel like this is probably the lens that a lot of people would compare them to when it comes to the efm and the efs they're probably very similar because they're both stms they're very similar po focal points they're um they are primes and they are about the same so you have to kind of like imagine this like you know without the lens cap so let's put them together at a weird kind of angle here so as you can see, this one has an auto man, auto focus, manual focus built into the thing itself. This does not. So right away, I can tell that uh, I have these upside down. So let's turn this around. Uh, so you can tell it's almost the exact same size. I believe this one is a little thinner. This is the EFS. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, lens cap, the lens cap. Let's put that in there a bit. Lens cap, lens cap. Very similar. Very, very, very similar. I believe this one is a little bit bigger, the EFS or EFM, EFS, a little sleeker, but the lens, this part on the back is freaking bulbous, bulbous sore over here. Um, okay, let's go ahead and um, put in, wait, hold on. <sighs> put in the 22 millimeter. Let me just get this all situated. I just. I told you guys I'm I'm one I'm really scared of the dust around here so I don't like to keep my uh, the sensor exposed for too long call me paranoid or call me maybe um here we go everyone saw it coming uh this just had to be made so this is what it looks like look how sleek that is I love this this is this is what you know a nice prime should look like on a small mirrorless body i have the uh leica m9 which is a, a rangefinder one um, not mirrorless but uses range uh, mirrors for rangefinder and it looks kind of like this with my 50 i love the leica lenses these are kind of like getting closer to that but not quite obviously it's this is like the toy version of the leica lens but let's go ahead and look oh look how mini this cap is it does have a little squeezy in the middle uh cap look else oh god let me just show you guys the sheer difference in cap size between the EFSM and the um, 
EFM, sorry. Look at look at this. Little baby, little baby. Um so that's pretty much that. Uh Alright, let's get ahead and look at the Okay, here we go, guys. This is pretty much it. Um, and uh, can you guys hear that? Let's see if we can get a zoom going on. Here, it's it's. Can you guys hear that? I don't think you guys can hear that. It is really quiet. I can feel it. I can feel it focusing. Um, uh, let's go ahead and um, you know I can maybe yeah I can do that one of these. See how fast it like picks up my face and and like you know when it focuses. Now there is a problem is that I'm trying to show you guys the back of the screen, but my webcam has to focus on this and this has to focus on me, so that's not a good test. Um, but from what I can tell, um, it looks pretty good. Um, it focuses really fast, and it looks really clear, at least on. At least on the back of this screen. But what I really care about, honestly, is, you know, oops, is uh, how it looks like from arm's distance. So if I go back a bit. So if I'm vlogging, let's see, my normal vlog mode, I'd be like this about. Um, actually, I can just tell myself. With this new, I'm going to break this screen before I even use this. Um, this is an interesting, it's just an interesting uh, way this works. Okay. I like this. I look terrible. I look terrible. Is is the you know the quality the better quality the worse you look, um, and that's how I that's how I see it at least. Um, it's funny because you do if you do look up at the screen, it does look like you're you're looking like this, which is normal. Or you have to choose either between um, am I looking like this at my vlog when I'm checking to see if um, it's focusing correctly, or am I looking like this? or like kind of like this rather because the flippy Audi screen goes to the side normally. So you'd be looking like this at your vlog. If you were trying to see if you were to check rather, you know, is it focusing correctly? Uh, this is the old, you know, TS or TSI or like any of the other like flippy Audis. And then this one's the selfie ones are more like this. So there's a trade back. Um, but the reason why I like it up here is not because of where my eyes go, but more that it's very compact and discreet and just turn it off on me. But there you go, guys. That there you have it. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna actually take this out for a test spin, so to speak. Um, I'm gonna do a vlog. Uh, I'm going to a car dealership today, so I'll try to vlog that. I'll do some other vlogs. See how that goes. I will be using the 22 um, because it is uh, significantly lighter. <laughs> actually, this is a little. Uh, this is not that heavy, but when you add that leverage to the end of it, you got to think the longer the lens, the more it tends to dip forward. Just physically um that's about it guys thanks for watching the video i do enjoy these unboxings so hopefully you guys like it i know i didn't have very much of a table set up so you couldn't see everything together but that is really not that much this show honestly all right guys thanks so much uh drop a like on this if you like it or subscribe stuff like that or do both that'd be great um again i'm cooters uh you know i do streaming and other videos as well so we guys do do big do good and do you and i'll see you guys on the next unboxing